Hello everyone. In this video, let's see how to create a standard SQS queue using AWS Management Console. So I'm logged into my AWS Management Console. Let's go to SQS uh, service. So once you are in the SQS service, click on create queue here. So basically there are uh, two types of SQS queues, uh, standard and FIFO. So for this tutorial, we are going to create a standard queue. Uh, so I have selected standard and I'm going to name it my demo queue something. Okay. And um, so I'm going to leave all these parameters as default, but to just you give you a quick um, introduction about what each of this means. So visibility timeout means when you send a message to SQS queue, um, if one of the consumers receives that message, so for 30 seconds, the next consumer, the if any other different consumer will not be able to see that message. So that's what this visibility timeout means. So after 30 minutes, 30 seconds, if the consumer doesn't delete it, uh, then the if other consumers can see that message. So that's what the visibility timeout means. And the message retention period, as it is like a self-explanatory, the message is retained for up to uh, four days. So delivery delay. So delivery delay basically means if you um, want like extra time to process the message, you uh, can delay the next message that is coming into the queue by a specified time. So if you want like, I mean, uh, let's say two minutes to process the each message, you can set the delivery delay to two minutes here so that like, I mean, you can process that message after the first message is processed. So that's what delivery delay means. And this is the maximum message size. So I have just 62, uh, 256 KB. That's the maximum size. And uh, this is the receive message wait time. So uh, this basically like, I mean, when you start uh, start polling for the messages, this is the maximum time the polling will start, I mean, wait for the message to arrive. So we will see this after creating the, uh, you know, SQS queue, how this works. So I'm go not going to change any of this, but you can set these parameters as per your uh, requirement. So in the access policy is basically the uh, permissions, who has the permission to, uh, you know, write message to the SQS queue and who has the permissions to um, read the messages from the SQS queue. So by default, like, I mean, uh, only the queue owner has a permission. So you can, if like, I mean, you want to specify a certain AWS account or IAM users or roles, you can give it here. And I mean, you can select this as well. So, but for this video, I'm going to select only this, only the queue uh, owner. And also if you want, like, I mean, you can edit this inline policy here, uh, select this advanced and you can add your, um, you know, custom IAM policy for this SQS queue. So um, just let's keep it basic and we'll select this default only the queue owner. So now only the queue owner, I mean, basically my account um, ID will have the permissions to read and write messages to this SQS queue. Okay. So um, I'm going to leave this uh, read drive allow policy uh, as default disabled and encryption. Basically, you can enable it or disable it depending on your requirement. If you enable, there are two um, encryption methods available. One is uh, server side encryption and the other is the uh, key management service basically if you select this you can I mean give your uh, you know custom CMK customer managed key or you can also select the default CMK as well so you can like I mean choose any of those so but for this tutorial like I'm just going to disable the encryption okay I'm uh, the dead letter queue so basically if there are any faulty messages or any undeliverable messages so if you uh, enable this and you can point to this these messages to be sent to a different uh, a, uh, SQS queue. So all those failed messages or, you know, uh, faulty messages will be stored in that SQS queue. So I'm going to disable it for now. And tags are purely optional. These are just to identify the, you know, uh, resource or labeling of the resources. Okay. So with these parameters set, let's click on the create queue here. So now if you see the queue is successfully created. Okay. Now um, let's just uh, test this SQS queue uh, quickly. Let's click on send and issue messages here. So let's say hi from, uh, let's say, uh, let's just say hi, hello, okay. Okay, and send this message. We can set the you know delivery delay here manually. Uh, I'm just going to leave it zero seconds and click on send message here. So now my message has been sent. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to call for the messages. So if you see here, I got this message, it says, uh, uh, the body is hi, hello, and there is all this metadata information of like, I mean, MD5 hash of the hash key of the message and all the, you know, uh, metadata information related to this message. So, so once you are done, like, I mean, you can delete this message as well. Okay. If you don't de uh, delete this message, I mean, you can, uh, 
Okay, so if I poll for poll again, I will receive the uh, message again. Receive count is two. So let me delete this message now. Okay, so now the message is uh, deleted. So if I stop polling now, it will uh, basically will not receive any message because I have already received and uh, processed that message. So now if you see, we didn't we did not get any message. So uh, that's a like I mean very basic uh, you know demo of how to create an SQS topic and how to uh, you know send and receive the messages using AWS Management Console. So in the upcoming videos, we'll be uh, diving deep into uh, more advanced topics like how to integrate SNS with um, S3 and Lambda and SNS and stuff like that. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope uh, you found it useful. If you found the video useful, please do not uh, subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.